Okay. Good morning, and welcome to our uh, talk today on uh, building a file observatory for secure parser uh, development as part of Langsec 2021. Uh, the work that we're uh, presenting here represents a fairly large team at JPL. Uh, you will also hear from Ryan Stonebreaker and uh, Anastasia uh, later in the talk. Uh, but we also have uh, some cloud experts uh, and some other folks uh, working on this. All right, before I get going, uh, we're enormously grateful uh, to uh, Sergey Bratis uh, for his leadership on this project uh, and for our uh, colleagues, Peter Wyatt and Duff Johnson at PDF Association, as well as our uh, friends and colleagues um, at Kudu Dynamics and at some of the other performers. Uh, this work is sponsored by uh, DARPA's Safe Docs program, uh, and we're uh, working together as a, as a larger team to help uh, improve uh, parser security. All right, so I'll talk initially, uh, I'll start out with a motivation uh, for why we want to uh, gather corpora and make them searchable. I'll talk a little bit about uh, fuzzy matching and some of the advanced search things that we've recently added. Uh, and then I'll pass it over uh, to Ryan for the API and UI, Anastasia for the classification of creator tool, and then I'll talk about next steps. Okay, so why are we bothering gathering a bunch of files uh, and making them searchable? So when developing uh, secure parsers, uh, if you want to induce grammars, uh, if you want to do any dev testing of parsers in development, um, if you want to do uh, testing profiling or tracing of existing parsers, it's really helpful to have a whole bunch of files that represent a broad spectrum of the various file formats available uh, in the world. And again, that's whether you're using the literal files or whether you're using those uh, files for uh, as seeds for fuzzing. So as we reported last year, we have two main uh, corpora that we've been working with. One is a uh, subselection of common crawl, uh, and the other is a bug tracker corpora that we have uh, gathered. And I'll talk briefly about both of those. So common crawl is a monthly open source crawl of a large portion of the internet. Uh, in May 2021, there were about 2.6 billion pages. It's available on AWS uh, public data sets, uh, and it's quite handy. They have uh, searchable indices online so that you don't have to uh, download all 280 terabytes. You can download um, about a terabyte, I think, of the index indices and figure out which file format you want to extract uh, from common crawl. As we found last year and as we mentioned last year, uh, one of the limitations of common crawl is that the files are truncated at uh, one megabyte. So for those files that were truncated, we refetched the full files from the original websites when available. Uh, the other item with Common Crawl is that it's a convenient sample. It's whatever uh, files Common Crawl was able to uh, crawl easily. Uh, there's no guarantee that it's a representation of the whole web. It's just a representation of whatever Common Crawl happened to find. Nevertheless, it's still an extraordinarily useful resource and a good way to get going to get you know, a couple million files of specific file formats that you want. Right. The other uh, corpora that we've been developing have been these uh, bug tracker corpora, and these were uh, the idea for this was uh, Peter Wyatt's of the PDF Association. Uh, in order to find stressful files, a high density of stressful files, uh, Peter recommended uh, gathering uh, crawling bug trackers uh, for uh, open source uh, PDF parsers and, and other parsers. Uh, so when people find problematic files, they'll submit them to uh, open source uh, parser uh, repos. And then we now have these files that were problematic for at least one parser. So in November, we uh, extended our crawl. Uh, we did an initial crawl earlier. Uh, in November, we extended our crawl for PDFs. So we're covering 35 issue trackers. We brought down about 1.2 million files. Uh, and then we did a subset of just the PDF uh, files and we packaged those separately. So in that PDF-centric subset, we have about 33,000 uh, problematic uh, PDFs, and those are all available uh, hosted on Apache Tika's uh, corpora uh, website, and you can see the link below. In March, uh, we became interested in JPEG files, so we uh, re-ran the same process, and we, got, we uh, targeted 13 issue trackers. We brought down about 7,000 uh, files. Uh, so we have uh, problematic JPEGs, which uh, can be useful as, as part of PDF parsing because JPEGs are so integral to PDFs. And during this process, I realized that some of these uh, files are stressful even for one's own operating system. Uh, so the, um, the thumbnailer in uh, Ubuntu uh, was, I was able to trigger some infinite loops uh, and uh, in that when I was fuzzing uh, some of those JPEGs. So not just crawling files, but also creating new files to be crawled yet again in some kind of infinite loop of problematic files. 
All right. So with the observe, so th those are the two corpora that we've mostly been working with, um, or developing and working with. So now I'll talk about the observatory at two scales. So the we initially started full cloud, and that was with AWS components, Athena, Kinesis, S3 for storage. We were uh, running a bunch of uh, tools against the files, uh, putting the metadata into Athena, doing a big join on in Athena, and, and making the file features searchable in Elasticsearch. Since then, we've discovered that there's a pretty important use case for desktop uh, use of uh, the observatory, or at least a single server kind of thing, where you have you know, maybe a million files, and you don't need to go to the full AWS, uh, Kinesis, and Athena. So we've started developing uh, a file observatory in a box, which will run desktop. Uh, we've made it somewhat hybrid so that you could run it on an EC2 instance and pull from S3 uh, if you wanted to, um, so you can, you know, uh, uh, per, uh, get a large EC2 instance if, if you want to um, not burn out your laptop. Uh, so we're working with full cloud now and desktop, and then also this kind of hybrid thing. So this is a quick overview of, of roughly the structure for both of those, uh, where we have you know, a bunch of files. Uh, we uh, process, the, we put those into S3 buckets or into a local file share, and we run a bunch of tools against those, pull out specific features, uh, do a join on those features per document, send those into Elasticsearch, and then make those searchable. Uh, via uh, Kibana uh, directly or through uh, our custom API and user interface. So on the uh, left, uh, you can see my like, public GitHub repo of the file observatory in a box. Uh, lots of room for improvement. We'll talk about that uh, towards the end and next steps. But we have pretty much a tool runner for each of the tools we run. Uh, and then we have a separate uh, ingest component that will take all of the output from those tools, do the join, and send those off to Elasticsearch. On the right, you can see the tables and Postgres that we create. So for e each tool has its own uh, table with some basic uh, statistics, um, you know, what the path was, uh, what the exit value was, process time in milliseconds, what standard out, standard error, that kind of thing is. And then from that, we extract further uh, features uh, from the output file or maybe from standard out, depending on the particular tool. All right. So that's kind of the overall architecture of the uh, two observatories. Uh, we have the cloud scale and also in the box. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about how we're using some of the built-in Elasticsearch features to do some really uh, fun uh, exploration of some of the features uh, within PDFs. All right, so one of the fun things uh, is that you can search for just plain old search with, uh, here's an example of searching for information leakage. Um, where if we search for uh, users uh, in the uh, keys and values uh, that we pulled out of QPDF, uh, you can see we have quite a, f not showing all of them, but here's an example where metadata around uh, an image, I believe, was stored. So you have the full user's uh, file path. So you get a username and you get a full file path uh, for the source of the file. There are all sorts of other queries that you can use uh, to find uh, information leakage in PDFs. Uh, this was just one of the more straightforward ones. Uh, and again, Q keys and values is the uh, field where we're running QPDF against the uh, PDFs, uh, taking that um, JSON structure and then uh, indexing the uh, keys uh, arrow values so that we can search on keys or values. And I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. In this slide, in fact, um, the other fun thing uh, with Elasticsearch is that you uh, can do um, uh, prefix auto complete or auto completion. So if you're interested in finding what the values are for a key of of concern or of interest to you as a parser developer, you can do uh, you can search for rotate uh, arrow, and then that will give you all of the values uh, that happen in rotate uh, for in in your set of uh, PDFs. This isn't particularly interesting for rotate, but for other uh, keys and values, it's quite interesting because you can then uh, do an aggregation to find out what the most common values are for specific keys. And then you can also subset that on, um, on uh, creator tools and other things. The other uh, fun thing we've done with Elasticsearch is uh, this auto suggest. So if you type, if you want to find spelling variants for specific keys, here we're searching on the um, document object model, the DOM keys that uh, were pulled out with QPDF. And we want to search on variants of subtype. Uh, you can see that uh, subtype with a capital T uh, shows up quite often. And then given the nature of the corpus, which was somewhat fuzzed, uh, you can also get some other weird spelling variations. But this is a really handy way of going through uh, structural components within a file format and getting and seeing what the spelling variants are in, in your corpus. 
And this uh, Elasticsearch is auto suggest uses um, uh, Levenstein edit distance, a uh, maximum of two. So it's finding all of the keys that are within two keystrokes of the target key. The other fun thing you can do is uh, look for significant terms. So here we're saying for, uh, for um, the misspelling or the spelling variant of subtype with the capital T, what are the most common uh, creator tools that are, that are uh, generating that um, spelling variant? And then uh, Elasticsearch will then run uh, here. I think we set up chi squared um, to, say, to, to ask the question and run the statistics on um, which creator tools are most commonly patterning with the spelling variant. And we have ArcMap is one of the most common, and then Esri, and then some other ones that are far uh, far less common uh, and, and not quite as interesting. Um, so, anyways, this is a way to uh, figure out which uh, creator tools are uh, most responsible for specific features in files uh, in, in an semi-automated way. So that it, it's not through discovery or through looking at all of the results that one figures this out. You just throw it through a significant terms query in Elasticsearch, and you get the chi-squared um, statistically most significantly interesting um, uh, creator tools as, as they relate to the specific feature of uh, misspelling of subtype. And then you can flip it and say, given that my uh, creator tool is ArcMap or Esri, what are the what are the uh, keys that most distinguish it from the other creator tools? So you can also um, this can help you find different uh, differentiators in specific creator tools. So if my creator tool is X, what kinds of structural features does it have that differentiate it most significantly from the other uh, creator tools? All right. The other fun thing is that you can write scripts against the Elasticsearch backend. So you can say, give me the top 1,000 uh, keys in the PDF document structure. Um, and then uh, what are the most common variants? And so that you're not sitting through and, and running each one one at a time. You can just script all that uh, quite nicely. All right. Now we will move off to the observatory API, and I will pass it over to Ryan. So the goal with the API and the UI was to sort of create a purpose-driven equivalent to Gabbana and to sort of expose some of the features that Tim mentioned in a more easily digestible way for an end user. So with the API, what that sort of consisted of is providing the ability uh, to programmatically download files uh, through the API directly from an S3 bucket. Uh, right here, you sort of see the V1 files endpoint, which is sort of used for that um, either individual file download or in bulk. And then the second sort of ability the API exposes is a direct pass through to Elasticsearch, which sort of allows you to search uh, specific indices that we want to expose. Um, so this sort of shows a little bit more about that, uh, but pretty much we just have it set up. Whatever query you submit to the API, um, as long as it's validated, it will be pushed through to Elasticsearch. So it, it gives us a little bit more control over security. Um, you, you can go to the next slide as well. Uh, the sort of uh, mentions that as well, talking about uh, the S3 file retrieval, and really it's just to put this uh, in between middle layer. We have a little bit more control over the security with it, uh, but it will also allow us to join these two functionalities together that weren't previously um, available. So, then uh, user interface, um, so if you go to the, the next slide, there, um, pretty much the idea, like I mentioned, was to create an equivalent to uh, Kibana, but with some of the specific uh, features that Tim had shown, like uh, prefix completion and auto suggestion sort of built in and other things we sort of found useful along the way. Like on the left, you see a whole bunch of lists of filters. These are pretty much all of the metadata fields that we're storing in Elasticsearch uh, for each PDF. And you can filter these down uh, uh, for a search query. And then in the bottom left, uh, this graph will sort of dynamically update based off of your search query. Uh, this is also dynamic in the sense you can choose what you're actually visually representing. So right here, it's just representing the uh, collection that they're from, but you can change that to uh, a number of the other filters as well. And then in the bottom right, uh, as you can see, you can get a breakdown of counts per collection. Uh, you can get the similar tokens and then the prefix completions as well, which were sh sort of shown previously in the Kibana example. And then uh, lastly, uh, this is just sort of a raw, straight from Elasticsearch uh, dump. Uh, for each file, uh, you can just see exactly what we have uh, in Elasticsearch, uh, all of the fields that are there as we're sort of uh, developing, adding new things on. Uh, this will always be up to date with whatever's in there. 
And then similarly, uh, this is sort of a page that shows uh, all of the fields that we have stored in Elasticsearch uh, and sort of how Elasticsearch is handling those, including like their analyzer and the, the type um, that each field is as well. Great. Thank you, Ryan. And now off to Anastasia for the uh, document classification task. Uh, yes. So one of the things that we wanted to do as part of as part of this work was classifying the um, creator tools of the documents based on the keys. And in the 2021 data set, some of the keys that we used were um, polyphile keys, but also uh, Q keys and key value pairs, as well as parent key pairs. Um, to simplify this problem, um, we chose to select the top 10 most occurring creator tools among the documents because otherwise there would have been hundreds of, hundreds of them. Um, we split the data set into the 80 and 20 percent um, as per the classic machine learning traditions. Um, and the creator tool was used as a label and the keys were used as features. Um, and the count vectorizer was um, thereafter used to vectorize the data. Um, we wanted to see uh, kind of how different classifiers could perform alongside cross-validation um, just to see which ones would be top performing. So some of the ones that we used were multinomial naive-based, Gaussian naive-based, Bernoulli naive-based, um, logistic regression, SVMs, and decision trees. Um, and on the next slide, um, you can see kind of the sample um, data that we were using. Um, as you can see, we have the ID, the tool, and also all of the keys used as features. Um, Yes, and um, we also did some visualizations. Um, in this one, you can see um, kind of the um, the accuracy results of each of the classifiers, and you can see that the latter three are the top performing. So the uh, logistic regression, SVMs, and decision trees are the best for this problem, which is um, quite predictable. Um, and on the next slide, you can see um, kind of an example of the important score. Uh, for a specific creator tool, in this case, um, Adobe Illustrator. Um, and you can see kind of the top uh, polyphile key. So here, the top three are ref, length, and array. Thank you. Uh, and now off to next steps for this project. So one thing is that as with PDF files and any, many other file formats, there are so many features that we could extract. And we're trying to trying to limit that to uh, a reasonable set of features that are uh, useful for the uh, performers on the Safe Docs program, but also interested, also features that are uh, of interest for uh, folks in industry and parser developers. So once we settle on those features, I'm hoping we can move on to uh, moving to simplify uh, the overall framework um, so that it's easier to add new tools, to add new features, uh, to parse out new features from the existing uh, data that's extracted from the various tools. Um, and then ho we're hoping to release the observatory in a box so that other people can use it. Um, and we're talking about creating potentially a desktop application uh, and allowing the putting the configuration of new tools into the user interface uh, so that it's not all um, coding uh, by configuration. So that's uh, where we plan to head. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention and uh, enjoy uh, observing uh, PDFs. Talk to you all later. Thank you.